Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Tonight it is my time, Monday, May 6th, 9.45 p.m. Uh, talking about the outlook of current Forex. So this is what you're looking at, is the analysis charts and tables that are part of my quant analytics service. You have the ability to download a package, uh, which is fresh off the press in the last hour. So I'm going to check those reports out. This is no different than my previous video I just put up here on uh, same analysis, but with crypto. Okay, and then a lot of this um, will come back from this video I've also put up earlier today called Should I HODL, HODL, or Generate Training Signals, or Fully Automate Orders? So... We did our bit with crypto, now let's work on Forex. So here's our latest package. Now, a couple of things we need to understand about Forex is very different now, or will be different from crypto. So I've announced earlier today in two videos that there have been references of videos or uh, API references in a way into the broker uh, for long and short breakdown on any current pair that you have in Awana, which is more accurate than not. No different than commitment of trade reports. <clears throat> okay, so let's start taking a look at what are the most profitable and have the most potential uh, pairs out there. There's a few things we need to see if I can find it. Mm. Uh, it doesn't look like we have that available to us. So let's check out the current volume. Forex here currently in the order of British pound against the Rand, British pound against the New Zealand dollar, British pound against the Australian dollar. So something is happening with the British pound here and then the uh, franc, the Swiss franc against the Rand. Uh, South African Rand, and then the U.S. dollar against U.S. Uh, Norwegian Krone. So that's a current status that we have. Um, let's see if we have one more uh, pair here. Uh, we're going to look at the most profitable over the last hour. Now ma imagine that the Asian markets are currently open. So again, these look like we have moves of a British pound against the Rand, 2.3. British pound against the New Zealand dollar, 1.78. British pound against the Australian dollar, 1.73. Swiss franc against the Rand, 1.46. And US dollar against the Norwegian krone. One thing we need to take away is the spread cost between these pairs. And I can probably tell you out of that lot that we have, we might have maybe British pound against the New Zealand dollar, British pound against the Australian dollar, and maybe just maybe the USD against the uh, Norwegian. So if I go in here and look for uh, real time spread for Rwanda here in Google, it will bring me up the cost that I'll get here. Live spreads, real time Forex and CFD rates. So let's see what the real time right now, what the costs are. <clears throat> I can tell you right out of the gate that we had the British pound against the Rand which is right here. Spread cost is as good as you may get at 18. Uh, we also had the British pound against the New Zealand dollars pretty tight, so that's an opportunity there at uh, 1.98 British pound against the Australian dollar right here, which was 1.87. So those are potential. And the last one, I, I will mention the franc against the rand, which is the Swiss franc against the rand. Uh, fairly, well, it's not too bad. 14.21, I still wouldn't consider it. Um, and then our last one was USD against Norwegian, right here at 8.72, and that would be considered a borderline spread cost. So out of that lot, I would definitely deploy my capital potential on British pound against Australian and British pound against the New Zealand dollar at this present time, based alone on this chart. And if you were to factor in uh, spread cost, so let's continue.
Other thing I like to always look at is um, the rank. I like to historically know what our strongest has the strongest slope uh, out there among the pairs. This is similar to finding out what are our strongest pairs, weakest pairs for both long and short. So a couple things that we can look at, the same thing in the crypto. I'll do a sort among these um, pairs here. And these are all the pairs that are available in a way that you trade for Forex. So we're gonna do some sorting here on the columns. The first one we're gonna do is sort on the slope. Let's see here, uh, so we'll do a sort descending on slope. And that's column nine, sorry, column nine. There. So there's two things we can get. This can be pretty useful. I've not been focusing a lot at Forex over the last little while. What we can you can get here out of this is a few shorting opportunities on the negative moves based upon slope again. USD against SAR, Australian dollar against Canadian dollar, New Zealand against the Singapore dollar. Now, a couple things we could take away here. We have two bearish, uh, two bearish uh, harmonics. So I may say that both the Australian the dollar on the shorting side may work. Let's just see here. Come on. Oh. Just do a new one. So I'll put down here shorts. We're going to use the Australian Canadian dollar. And then the other one, and that's only because uh, we have a bull, a bearish. Well, actually, I'm, I, I've, I've shown this before in the crypto. You have both, both a bullish and a bearish. That kind of, in a way, that cancels it out. So I would then turn around and just say, you know what? Let's just put New Zealand and Singapore dollar as a shorting opportunity. So I'm going to place that here. So that's the Australian against the Singapore. Did I get that right? And New Zealand against Singapore dollar. So let's go over to our Wanda uh, uh, spread cost here and see what it says for that pair. Is that still to be considered? So New Zealand against the uh, Singapore dollar, that's a pretty tight spread cost at 0.9 or, or if you up, up, round it up at one. So that's definitely, definitely, definitely a shorting opportunity. Now, um, Couple things we need to really figure out here is on the short side. Let's go over to the um, trading view here and generate a signal for what that says. So if we wanted New Zealand against SGD, uh, Oanda as our data source. So right now, as it loads up, been in a steady decline. That's a pretty good probability. I'm not sure if I'm going to even look at volatility because if there's a strong enough daily move uh, downward trend, then I would say, yeah, this is a classic. Ooh, uh, looks like it. And what's our signal? Strong sell, strong short. So that is very, very good to know that. Still a strong sell on the five day. Even on a one day, still a strong, uh, strong sell or strong short. That's definitely, definitely, definitely something to consider. Actual fact, I'd probably put that on a watch list. But we'll be able to uh, verify that. So if there's any shorts in here, I don't see it. Uh, maybe this one here. U.S. dollar against the Singapore dollar. And uh, let's just go over and see if that's something to consider. Spread is pretty tight again, 1.36, which is good. And then let's do the Singapore dollar, or sorry, U.S. Singapore dollar. Again, Oanda. We gotta make sure that the volume's there as well. Not gonna worry about it too much. But it's something definitely to consider as a shorting opportunity. Some money up. So that's what these signals give you. 
uh, the ones that are generated out of the quant analytics service for 47 bucks a month. That's pretty good. I've already shown uh, a, a for sure three contenders. Um, here's a chart. It's a buy, so don't worry about that. Okay, um, so we looked on the negative slope. Let's look at the stronger slope. So up here is the, um, the uh, negative slope, but let's see the stronger slope plays. Um, there we go. So here's our strong ones to, to contend with. I do know the ones that I've seen specifically is this one, USD against the Indian rupee. Let's see the spread cost. So that's fairly high. That's 69, so I wouldn't consider the USD INR. Unfortunately, that is. The Euro Huff is another one. That could be something of, of use. But here, again, the spread cost is way out of whack at 323. Okay, moving on, let's continue our slope here. These two I don't think would be very wise. I'll look at one of them, USD try. Let's see, USD Turkish Lira. Ah. We have an opportunity here because the U.S. dollar, Turkish lira is at six, so that's a possibility for a long. I recall the other one was euro against Turkish lira. Let's see the spread cost right here at six point eight. So we have now some potential longs here to look at because right now um, those are good. So we have euro. Turkish Lira and USD Turkish Lira. All right, so those are looking pretty good. Uh, this one might be good too. Euro against the Japanese Yen should be pretty tight. So here, wow, that's odd. Euro, Japanese Yen, not feasible at 123. So we won't consider that. All right, so um, those are some of the slopes. That doesn't really matter if we should consider uh, volatility because volatility brings opportunity. So I'm not going to do that. Actually, I will. But we, we, we kind of want the more volatile ones or trading opportunities. We don't like flat volatile pairs or, or pairs that are not volatile. So again, how do we measure that? That's quite easy. We use standard deviation. So we're going to sort by... K, column K, and this time we're going to sort in ascending order, ascending, and actually I should have done the reverse. So these pairs here are your least volatile, right here as you move down, these are the more volatile ones. So a uh, lot, definitely USD, try, European try are very volatile which is good. Those are good conditions. They're hard to trade, but they can be useful. All right, so know that. So let's look at another file. Now in this case, we could short both uh, in, short and long in Gwenda. Now, as I said, here's the spread cost. So we can look at them historically. Um, I could manually generate the spread cost myself on the ones of interest of the euro and uh, sorry the euro against the Turkish lira and the USD against Turkish Turkish lira so here let's see is there a chart spread cost chart for New Zealand against no there's no chart all right um, now we have a set of word documents here I don't know if we have a short that's generated this one as well. So let's look at this word document. That's for the Forex short opportunities. I don't think there'll be many, but hopefully a one of interest will pop up. 
So we have here a sale, sell or short, for the euro against the Polish zloty. I think that's the only one we have generated here. Um, before, if we do look at it, let me look at the spread cost to make sure. Um, okay, so this is worth trading or looking at euro against the Polish because the spread cost is 4.28. So let's look at it. Okay, again, I've talked about this, these many, many cross signals. These these are pretty well false positives. I wouldn't worry about that. Here's the sort of thing we don't like to see. Um, actually, I should take that out. Here you can see the price action has been bouncing off the, a slight downward trend. So there may be some opportunity here as it's been bouncing around on that trend. Uh, here's where it gets very interesting. All right, so we have our Fibonacci levels quite clearly. These two levels here um, at 382, and 618 we're bouncing around here that is fine but based upon this track record and again we are using this for short uh, so when it breaks through the 618 level then we may have a, uh, a shorting opportunity um, so again to our benefit we have slightly more negative uh, daily returns, so that's good. Here's what's not working is we were generating two bullish, um, well, it's got the dates wrong, but the any, anyway, it, it's they're bullish patterns. I need to correct these uh, dates here. Um, you know, these moving these candles, it isn't a downward move, so it is possible. RSI, once it gets below 50, which it is. Momentum seems to be going into decline, but we want to know historically how that's performing. We've got five downward candles over the last 90 days, definite forming of a, a negative momentum. Uh, here we are on the 30 day, clearly moving down, but here we have a green. So, but there is longer wick down. So that's a weak, a very weak, uh, Candle, but I'd be more worried about the bullish signals that have been coming out of the candles. So there may be an actual bullish play coming. So shorting may go against you based upon that forecast. Something I would definitely not consider. Okay, let's take a look at the longs. There's two types of charts that come out of this lot here. Uh, the first one is just the generic one, and then we have two other ones. Actually, we have three based on trend, based on volume. So let's first look at the one that is just based on nothing. See which one it says to long. Now looking at the list here for a long we may see Euro against the Turkish Lira, USD against the Turkish Lira. And remember, the, the current spread cost is feasible to allow this. So here's the order we have. Canadian against the Singapore dollar, pound, or sorry, yeah, the pound against the Japanese yen, euro against the uh, Singapore dollar, European, sorry, the euro against the Canadian dollar. So again, we have a downward, all of these, might even have to take this out. But again, we have a downward trend. The only time I would look at this, and this pair is for the Canadian Singapore dollar I'm speaking of, Slight downturn is when that price breaks through that trend, then you got my attention to want to take an entry. Again, we have some open up uh, longs here, these different levels. This is my level I'd be setting at my target, again, at the 618 level for an entry if it happens. And we see some momentum, we'll see you see. Here we have a very mixed daily set of returns. But to me, I would say it's more negative than positive. Uh, we do have a bullish harmonic of a Gartley. Um, here's the chart. Uh, but 
and also gets cancelled out when we have a bearish harmonic. So again, uh, I'm not going to worry about this. For our candle patterns, we have two. I'm going to have to fix these dates, but we have clearly two bearish signals. So it kind of contradicts what we're trying to determine here, but there's been a steep decline uh, over the fall between October and December. It's gone into a flat mode, just really not going anywhere. It's one of those classic sideline, and just again, the moving averages are compressing, but this may get interesting when those, uh, in this case, the looks like the uh, SMA 50 uh, is pressing against the uh, EMA, but if the EMA or the price moves um, above the the uh, averages, I think you might have an entry, but they do lag. This I probably put on my watch list, mm, but again, it's just flat land. It's this. This really does not excite me. So let me update my list here. So here I do long entries. This is how I feel about it. And on the watch list, I probably try out. Did I look at the spread cost here for the Euro SGD? Yep, it's possible at 1.52. So I would kind of consider on the watch list the Euro SGD. All right, next one. So we looked at the Euro SGD. Typically, I would not look beyond the top 20 on these, these reports here. Um, this does not compel me to want to do anything at this present time. Uh, so we have the Euro SGD. Um, I'm just going to, oh, 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 let, let me just uh, take that back here. So here's a Euro SGD. This one that we've looked at, which is the Euro, the Canadian against the Canadian against SGD, not very compelling, not at all. But once again, we're now looking at the Euro SGD. Nice uptrend, but historically down below the trend line, you can see. Here, um, from my perspective, you probably need to see that price hit the 618 level. Um, the returns here, uh, it's mixed. I'll just leave it at that. Bullish, harmonic. We have a bearish. Again, those, those cancel each other out. Um, here's an interesting bearish, bullish. So we've got two bullish candles, one bearish candle. Depends upon when they're generated. But here, again, the six month view does not say a lot. Still at 50 RSI, virtually no momentum. But on the 90 day, it's just oscillating. Yeah, momentum slightly higher, positive. RSI still at 50, 30 day view. A little strong momentum. We've got two recent bars. We've got a big VAR uh, move and then two down. So I would not get too excited. But again, what will I do here? I'll keep it on, as I said, the Euro SGD to stay on the watch list and not be classic entry from what I'm seeing. You know, I could go on. Let me just do a quick view of this pair. British pound against the yen. Always, always check the cost of the spread. It's very important before you do anything. Um, so here we have the British pound uh, against the SGD. It's, it's feasible at 1.78. And then let's continue just very quickly if it's worth. Flat line downward signal. So far, no. Below the golden zone, no. But very tight even if there was an opportunity historically it's not going to go anywhere but as i said it would break through that 618 level uh but there have been more i'd say there's been more negative days again bullish harmonic 
bearish harmonic cancels each other out. Uh, not looking good. I, I just don't like it. It's just flatlining, not even worth going through this. Okay, so that's just standard. Long. So we had two other long Word documents that we could check out or reports. Let's base this one on trend. So this one says, see if we have either the Euro Turkish Lira or USD Turkish Lira, which I would say, do we have positions for those? Meanwhile, on the ranch, these are big files, 1.3 megs. This may take a little bit of time to load up. Again, I only like to look at the first two or three, and that's it. So again, these are longs based on trend line slope. So what we have here is USD Huff, USD Check, GBP against the Yen. But we don't have the ones that we're eyeing. So let me check USD Huff as the first choice. Spread cost is 288. I'm not going to bother looking at that. USD against the check, that would probably be pretty high as well. 22, I still think that's way too high. British pound against the Japanese yen. Spread cost is, wow, 145, forget that. I'll have to update my trading logic here to eliminate these. USD against the Japanese yen, hopefully that will be a potential. Check it out, 110, 110. Again, not feasible. I'm gonna to have to update my chart. British pound against the RAND. GBP against the RAND. That's the South African RAND. Uh, 18, it's still not possible, but if there was overnight trading, that might be potential. Euro against the Huff. So chances are none of these are any good. 323, no thanks. So screw that report. I'll have to update my programming code to make sure it doesn't include these because they have not been updated with the recent discovery of the spread cost. The last file we'll look at is uh, this document here based upon volume. So hopefully we have some something decent here to work with. Let's see, let's see how big this file is. So this file is 1.4, which is a little bit bigger than the previous file. Let's see if there's um, any other reports we could look at. Doesn't look like it. So here's our order. Swiss franc against the RAND, Euro against the Norwegian Krone, GBP against the New Zealand dollar, Euro against the Swedish, Euro against the uh, Rand, pound against the Rand, and the uh, pound against the Australian dollar. So we will be able to filter them out. First up is the pound against the Australian dollar. I think this was tradable. Um, yes, pound against the dollar, or pound against the Australian dollar, 1.8. So let's check out this report. Now, one thing I need to stress here, we have the group mean and the group volatility as well. So here's the individual of this group, uh, of, of this pair against the group. And you could do a comparison to see that this pair is less than the group volatility. Uh, and the volume is, uh, Slight, oh, it's, it's, it's lower than the group uh, volume mean. All right, so let's check out these charts again. These don't really excite me when I see downward trend. It is above the um, historical trend here. Here we have a very tight set of Fibonacci levels. It's broken through the 618. I probably wouldn't touch this pair until it maybe gets through that 382 level. Um... Historically, very negative uh, 
So the chances are I probably wouldn't want to take this trade based upon what I'm seeing. We have here a bullish harmonic. Is there a bearish one? No. We do have a recent bullish candle. Here is our six month chart. Clearly see it's moving up. That's looking good. Looking great on the potential entry right away. Momentum is as strong as it can get at 0 0.05. Here's our um, 90 day. Nice moves up there, quite nice. Here you can see how the um, uh, the SMA is now higher than the EMA, which is a bullish signal, which you can confirm. Again, we have po quite possibly an entry, and we may have missed these entries here for the last, let's say, four or five days. Momentum's coming off, though. This is where we need to watch, is the 30-day. This is where it gets kind of confusing. Should we uh, not take the trade because we've missed the opportunity, or should we take the trade? I don't know. Definitely the momentum's still strong, but uh, if I saw this yesterday, I definitely would have taken the trade, but then we would have had a down day, even though the price did still move up. So I'm going to put this pair on the watch list. GBP, and then it's Australian dollar. All right, so that's kind of compelling. Just depends upon what happens later today if that upward momentum still continues. Now we get into the pound against the New Zealand dollar. I wouldn't be surprised this is similar. Again, the false positives here on these crossing averages. Once again, we have a downward trend, but still above trend on the recent price action. And again, we have a very tight, tight, tight. Here's where it gets interesting. We have now crossed the 618 level. That would, right, if I was to use this exclusively, that could be an entry shaping up. But looking here, um, we have a few outliers here in the distribution on the positive versus negative daily returns. Slightly skewing though on the negative side, so I think that would not really be either here or there. We do have a bullish uh, harmonic boom, okay, but we also have a bearish, you know what I'm gonna say, cancels each other out. Here though, we have two recent bullish candles. These are looking good if I once can get this time frame. Uh, properly fixed, we will have better idea. So again, we have the same similar moves. We're pounding against the Australian dollar. It's reaching that entry that we like to see of 70. Uh, but the momentum looks like it's somewhat flattened out recently. But look, we have the same scenario on the 90 day. Really nice moves up yesterday, two, three, four days ago. I might have taken that trade. But that is a real hard one. But you can see here the RSI at 70, positive momentum at 0 0.05. But here's the 30 day. Just really depends upon what happens with this uh, next trade. I definitely put this on the watch list yet again. So that would be GBP against New Zealand dollar. Okay, CHF uh, against the RAND. Um, bouncing around above a flat uh, trend line. Yet again, we are bouncing around on the low entry. That's a possibility entry. But what do we have here? Ooh, uh, evenly some outliers again on both ends for the distribution. We do have a bullish harmonic. Mm, okay, so we only have one bullish harmonic. How many candles do we have? Okay, so we have a bullish and bearish. Again, that's not very significant. Uh, bouncing around here on the, on the 180. Uh, yeah, recent downward moves. 
Looky here, I find this very interesting. RSI's not really gone above 50. Um, the momentum still builds. The 30 day, this is what bothers me, is these two recent down uh, red candles still maintain that. Oh boy, this is a tough one. Uh, oh, hold on. I, I forgot to do the important check. What's your spread cost? CHF against the uh, RAND. Uh, CHF RAND. 14. I should have looked at that. Not even done that analysis. Let's do that here in the next pair. Uh, Euro against the RAND. That spread cost is 16. No way, Jose. Next pair. And now we're starting to get into lose our uh, interest. But I'll, I'll, I'll make these corrections in the next few days on the targeting. So we don't care about this pair. I want to make this the last pair. So here we have uh, pound against the rand. How's that spread cost right here? 18, too high. No, thank you. Next pair. I think we're, re we're grasping for straws here. You're against the, the Norwegian. Uh, that spread at 9.78 is barely worth looking at. Let's do it just for fun. It's here we had a very nice signal. We move up historically. I don't know if there's any real reliability here, but 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 this is quite interesting. Upward trend, recent price action did break through that upward trend. That's good. Here you can clearly see that the Fibonacci levels are too tight. And there might be a reason. Mm. All the Fibonacci's, the pricing, all the pricing action has been historically below all Fibonacci levels. Uh, again, this is evenly distributed on the negative, positive daily returns. Here's a, uh, a bullish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a bullish, bullish harmonic here. Um, I don't know about that. It's too tight. But this is where it gets interesting. Six month, our two crosses of SMA 50 EMA cross. They break through, pricing did go up and continue to go up. Look at this, a strong, like really strong momentum the last few months. Our size broken through. This looks like a winner for entries. Even though some of these signals don't really add up. Is that a 180? Okay, so this is a 90 day chart. 70 day RSI, strong momentum. 30 day, more positive green candles. Only one really negative uh, down candle, and it still continues. So this, I would consider a definite, definite, definite. And I think as with all the bad news, this could be a definite um, entry. <clears throat> so... Uh, but we got to make sure that we watch that spread cost on that pair on the Euro Norwegian of 9.78. But right now, I think it's strong enough to say it's doable. Okay, another interesting pair that's very similar is the Euro against the Swedish. So again, we have similar pricing action. Slight trend up, very strong move up recently. Very strong uh, upward trend, broke through, trend continues. Now, here's the thing. When you look at the history, historical, 
This may come off, but it may bounce off in the next few days on the entry, or sorry, on the trend line. That typically may happen based upon the three upswings and its fourth one back here, and it bounces off of the trend uh, two times. So this may be another potential. What I would consider this looking at other charts for this pair is that it may, if, if the price does drop, let it and let on the next leg. If it bounces uh, off of the trend, a slight move. And if it does move up again, that momentum's still there, then I'd definitely consider that an entry. Very similar to, um, but let me just check. I always keep forgetting to check the spread cost here. Euro against the Swedish 10.7 uh, again. That is something you need to watch. Um, but I've given you these three conditions that we need to meet even a fairly remote chance of an entry. Here it's up. I would not be surprised if it hits a peak at this level. It should drop back. And again, it's kind of weird because the Fibonacci's have not opened up. But it is clearly uh, has an upward strong momentum. I think part of the story there is if the markets come off, these two pairs, uh, especially the Swedish, has a credible story. Therefore, there will be moves as a defense play if the markets continue to move negative. Here you can see negative and positive daily returns. I would say that's... Mm, uh, even bullish currently. Wow, this is just bizarre. I've never seen charts like this. Candles look pretty good. Two candles are bullish. But again, you can see it's just overheating. Historically, I do know here, even just this little bit here, these two RSI points over 70, it dropped down. It has to drop down. There's just no way, but the but the interesting thing is that the uh, momentum's still really strong. Here you can see that move again, really strong. Only two negative uh, days over the last uh, four, five, uh, maybe 10, 12 days. But it's definitely, definitely um, something a missed opportunity. But I think if it does come off. This is something to watch and definitely strong potential to uh, consider. So let me add this. So I've already done that. I think that's our last report. We'll go through everything here again. Okay, let me just check in everything. Okay, so let's walk through everything here based upon what we know. There looks like there could be strong potential of entries. Euro against the Turkish Lira, USD against the Turkish Lira. Why? Because the uh, spreads have tightened up. They look good. This one, based upon what I've seen, seems to have a good uh, potential for long entries. Our watch list is very interesting. These three here, Euro against the uh, Singapore dollar, Pound against the Australian dollar, Pound against the New Zealand dollar, Contenders, this is a missed opportunity, but it may come back as a really strong potential as a defense play that I've seen historically. And that is the US, oh, sorry, the Euro Swedish. And that's pretty well it. Short of opportunities. Looks like uh, New Zealand against your Singapore dollar. So that's where we're at. Let me just check uh, the screen here. Do we have anybody? watching no okay it doesn't matter so that's pretty well it um hopefully uh, you got some things out of it let me know and we shall talk to you there